In this week's newscast, a warning for overweight kids in WA. The latest statistics are in. Easy Target, the Triple C's report shows the Health Department's systematic failure to prevent corruption. Plus, a new beginning for the father who struggled to find a job. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lung and Ali Harper. Good evening is a harsh reality for parents to face. According to the latest study, a growing number of kids in Western Australia are overweight and obese. However, the Health Minister doesn't seem to be convinced. Kerev Taplin has the story. Obesity is becoming an alarming problem among kids in WA. Do the public agree? But it's yeah. not a surprise given that uh, there's a fast food outlet on, yeah. on just like every corner yeah. on every road. It's, it's definitely a big problem so there is something that we need to do about it. The latest report from the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare has released a statistic about the obesity rate of children aged between 5 to 14 year olds. More than a quarter of the children in that group faces the problem. In WA, 26.5% of children in that age group, 5 to 14, were overweight or obese. But the health minister disagreed, saying from what he has seen, there is absolutely no way that 25% of kids are obese. But he admits that obesity is a worldwide phenomenon. And so we are spending a lot of money as a government on things like nature play, on, on things like improving involvement of children in sport and rec and through the department uh, looking at trying to discourage people from having sugary drinks and fat foods and snacks and the like. Being overweight can lead to diabetes, heart attacks and strokes. Dr Haim said the government has taken action to encourage people to stay healthy. Kira Tuplin, WMN News. It's a fact that most of us have never been homeless, but Australia's most influential people will encounter the unimaginable experience at next Thursday night's CEO Sleepout at the Wacker Ground. 1,062 business leaders across the nation, including owners, directors and chief executives, will partake in the Vinnie's CEO Sleepout on Thursday night. The annual event aims to raise funds and awareness for homelessness in Australia. Almost $3 million have been collected and will assist community services in developing and maintaining prevention programs. And it's an interesting event in, um, even though people sleep rough, you wake up in the morning and there's this sense of vitality around the place. This is the second year that Matthew Clark, Managing Director of Bar 138 on Barrick, and founding director of Climac and Company Family Lawyers, Richard Climac, will participate in the sleep out. Um, last year it was actually quite a moving experience. Um, hearing from people the actual first-hand stories um, really brought home that anyone can become homeless at any time. Um, the government is increasingly not going to spend money on these kind of issues. Well, that's my perception. Um, so the, the ball gets knocked over to uh, organisations to like Vinnie's and uh, it's important that funds are, are, are raised and awareness is raised for this kind of event. Mark, Matthew and Richard, along with another 115 West Australian participants, will spend Thursday night at the WACA with just their pillow, sleeping bag and a piece of cardboard to sleep on. Marianne Candelara, WAMN News. The latest report tabled by the Corruption and Crime Commission warned that the Health Department does not have adequate process to prevent corruption and fraud. Darren McErlane reports. The Triple C identified a significant systemic failure and the problem requires urgent attention from the department executives. The review was carried out after Wathilamaj Wickramasinghe was jailed this year after he abused his position to obtain benefits of over $490,000. Many flaws identified in the report allowed Mr Wickramasinghe's corruption misconduct went undetected for six years. It's also revealed that projects cost below $20 million received less oversight by the department. We have been talking about these issues inside the Department of Health now for years and the government has done nothing about it. Health Minister Kim Hames responded stating the government are making changes to prevent frauds from happening again. We don't want to see any fraud and, and where the system allows the possibility for that to occur we've got to change it. And we've started that already once we saw that draft report at the end of last year um, but there's still quite a bit more that still has to be done. Darren McElane, WAMN News. Channel 9's controversial news interview with WA's most dangerous sex offender, TJD, sparked a debate in Parliament. 
The interview led to a radio response from WA Corrective Services Minister Joe Francis criticising the Nine Network. But the opposition said Mr Francis knew about the interview six days before it was aired and he should have alerted the victims. Over the past two decades, TJD sexually assaulted 13 women and the decision to release him has caused huge public outrage. Two weeks ago, we brought you the story about Steve Anderson, a man who struggled to find a job despite sending out more than 300 resumes. After the story was aired, he received a tremendous amount of feedback and subsequently found a new job. This week, he started working for the Fremantle City Council. Very happy. It uh, caters for pretty much everything I do. It does safety, risk, um, analysis, OHS, the whole lot. Uh, the amount of response I received from um, a lady, by the, well, one of the ladies, um, Rosie, um, I think her name was Rosie Walters. Yeah. The amount of uh, help that she gave uh, through my Facebook um, um, request was astonishing. Um, I had over 365 views on um, the cry for help, so to speak. To World News, US President Barack Obama has ruled out the possibility of sending troops to Iraq. He says the Iraqi government needs to set aside differences for their wider community if they want the US's ongoing support. The civil war continues with soldiers from Iraq and the Levant invading Baghdad in order to establish their own state in Iraq and Syria. Any action that we may take to provide assistance to Iraqi security forces has to be joined by a serious and sincere effort by Iraq's leaders to set aside sectarian differences to promote stability and account for the legitimate interests of all of Iraq's communities. And here's Carly Samata with this week's top stories in science. Thanks Evan and Ellie. The discovery of an island population of quolls has given the endangered marsupials new hope of survival. While conducting a survey of the Kimberley Islands, Department of Parks and Wildlife zoologist Russell Palmer discovered the population of northern quolls on Malema Island. He said the quolls' presence on the island gives some security the species will persist despite threats posed by feral cats and toxic cane toads. A new technology is turning mining wastewater into rainwater. The cost-effective technology called the Virtual Curtain removed metal contaminants from wastewater at a Queensland mine, discharging the equivalent of around 20 Olympic-sized swimming pools of rainwater quality water. The Virtual Curtain produces less sludge than other wastewater treatment options, which has huge economic and environmental benefits. CSIRO scientist Dr Grant Douglas said the technology is enabling the global mining industry to reduce its environmental footprint and extract wealth from waste. The technology is available through Australian company Virtual Curtain Limited. Leading medical researcher Professor Peter Clinken has been appointed the new WA Chief Scientist. Premier Colin Barnett announced Professor Clinken's appointment and said one of the Chief Scientist's many and varied roles will be to provide a bridge between the scientific community and government. The Premier said the appointment will begin on the 1st of July. Western Australia has a number of fantastic natural attributes. Uh, we do research extremely well. We could do it even better. Uh, I guess one of the great dreams that I have is seeing this city and this state become a centre of innovation and creativity. And that's science. Thanks Carly, you've done it again. That's the programme for the week. For the latest news, you can hop onto our website or follow us on social media. Thank you for watching. Daniel Staniskov will be back next Sunday. Good night.